In this video, I'm going to show you how to create some really great looking realistic grass in Blender 2.8 using the new real-time render engine Eevee. So I've created a lot of grass over the years now, and this is what I've settled on as being the best method to get great looking results out of Blender. Now, if you don't have time to create all these assets yourself, I just updated the realistic nature asset pack and the realistic tree asset pack over on the Blender market to be fully compatible with Blender 2.8 and the real-time render engine Eevee. So with that pack, you can get like 19 different pre-made assets that are fully customizable, ranging from rocks to grass to ferns and leaves and flowers, pretty much anything you can think of as far as nature goes, you can get in that pack and it's available for just $10. It's also available on Sketchfab and my Patreon page as a perk. If you guys want to support the channel and get some great looking pre-made assets, you can do that. Otherwise, if you like creating things yourself, then this tutorial is for you and let's get started creating some great looking grass. Okay, so we are using, as you might have noticed, Blender 2.8. And like I said, we'll be rendering it in real time with Eevee. So to get started, I'm just gonna close my window there and we're gonna delete the default cube. And first off, we're gonna enable a few add-ons real quick. So I'm just gonna go over to Edit, Preferences, and here is our Preferences tab. I'm just going to search right here for Plane and we're gonna enable the Import Images as Planes. And then I'm also gonna turn on the Node Wrangler add-on. If I just clear that out, start typing Node, you can see we have the Node Wrangler add-on. This makes working in materials even faster in Eevee to be able to switch between things and see what you're getting. So go ahead and enable that as well. So with that said and done, we can go File, Import, Images as Planes. Now a texture I'm gonna use is from an awesome free website called CCO Textures. You can go ahead and download it with the link in the description, but you get this foliage pack here of grass that gives you all kinds of alpha masked grass ready to go. This is the best way to do it in my opinion. So go ahead and follow the link in the description and download the foliage one right here. And then I'm just gonna open it up right here. I downloaded the 2K version and I'm gonna use the color map right there. So with that imported now, if I jump into front view here or side view with number pad three, I'm gonna turn on our rendered view here so I can quick see what the grass looks like here. And I'm just gonna tab into edit mode, go control R and add in a cut just at the bottom of our textures here and then a cut at the top as well. So control R, making sure to keep the textures completely within your four vertices here. And then I'm gonna go control R one more time and just grab that blade of grass at the end. So basically cutting it off right there. So what I have here will work great and I'm just gonna switch to face select mode and grab the faces outside of that grass blade right there and then hit X and delete faces. So with this face selected, I'm just gonna hit L and I'm gonna grab it so it's sitting right on top of that origin point you see right there. With that said and done, I can tab out of edit mode and we can set up our material for this. So for the material, we're gonna go ahead and split our window here. Let me pull that over and I'm gonna change this window to our shader editor. Now to get a little better view of what our material is gonna look like, you might wanna grab the lamp in your scene right there, jump to the settings here and change it to sun lamp. Um, we're gonna change the strength down to be about a seven and we can leave everything else as is for now. You can see that's just lighting up our blade of grass so we can really see what the materials are going to look like better. So over in our settings here, grab that object and you can see we have a default material that's imported with the import images as planes add-on and it's just using a basic mix shader with our transparent and diffuse. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to delete the diffuse and replace that with a principled shader. So I'm just gonna go shift A and add in shader principled shader. This will go ahead and connect into the bottom socket there and then I'm gonna use this texture here as the color of our principled shader. Now with this texture here, you can see our color showing up there. I'm gonna shift D and duplicate it and then click the little window here to open up a new texture. I'm gonna grab the foliage mask right there. And this is what we're gonna to use to control the factor on our mix shader. So you can drop that in there and now you can see we have our blade of grass, except the transparency isn't working yet. And that's because over in our settings here, you can open and close this with N we need to set it to be alpha blend. And in Eevee, this will allow you to see the alpha mask over your texture there. I'm also gonna go ahead and give it a transparent clip shadow right there, and then just enable screen space reflections and subsurface transparency or translucency right there. 
With that set up, we can close that off now though. I'm just gonna give myself a little bit more room in our material editor here. And then I can duplicate our color texture here by hitting Shift D. And we're gonna open up the roughness map right here. And this can just be connected right to the roughness on our principal shader. Now, oftentimes in cycles, you're supposed to change this to non-color data. I was getting some interesting results though, doing that with Eevee. So I'm not doing it right now, but it's possible that if it's working right, you can change this to non-color data and get the better results. But for now, I'm not going to. So the last thing then is to duplicate this texture one more time. And we're gonna open up our normal map here. With the normal map here, we're just gonna connect that right to the vector normal map node right here. Connect the color to the color and then the normal to the normal on your principal shader, grabbing that UV map there as well. And then we're gonna take the strength way down. As you can see, it's way too strong. We'll take it down to about a 0.2. Let's just kind of move our transparent and mix shader down because we want these to be the last ones in our node tree here. So the last node is going to be a shader add shader. We'll plug that in right there and then a shader translucent shader right there. And this is gonna go into the bottom socket of our add shader. And then we can connect the color here to the color of our translucent shader there. And you can see we're getting some pretty good looking results. And if we go to the other side of our um, blade of grass here, we can see the light is passing through it now with the translucent shader here. What I'd like to do to give this a little bit of a better result is if I just pull this out a little bit more, is I like to add in a color hue saturation value to the translucency node here, um, right between the color. And then I can just give it a little bit of a warmer hue here by going 0.48 and then giving it maybe a little bit more saturation. And you can see that when the light passes through it, you get a little bit of an oranger look, kind of faking subsurface, but um, working with the translucency instead. Now you could just leave this blade of grass just like that with this basic material setup, but I wanna take it one step further and give it a randomizing color. So it looks really good when it's repeated in a particle system. So to do this, I'm going to pull our color node back here just to give ourselves a little bit more to work with. And I'm going to add in an input object info. With the object info node here, you can see that there is a random spot on the bottom here. And I'm going to add a converter color ramp and connect the random to the factor of our color ramp. Now with the color ramp here, I can choose different colors of green and orange, and this will kind of randomize which one of these colors are mixed in with our material here. So holding down control and then just left clicking, I can add more handles to our color ramp node, and I'm just gonna give it a variety of color, adding in a few new handles here and giving them different shades of green and orange, maybe even a light blue green. And one more here. We'll give this one another kind of orangey kind of dead grass look here. Something like that. And so you can see with this range of colors here now, if I was to take this and add in say a color mix node here, mix RGB, right into the base color, we're going to drop this into the bottom socket. And now I'm going to change the mix over to hue. So we're just kind of changing the hue of our shader here. And you can see now, if I duplicate this, we get some randomizing colors. Now, um, if I change the factor up even more, you can see it even stronger. This one's kind of bluer, this one's kind of deader um, and oranger. So you can see that that's working very well, and I'm just gonna leave the factor at about a 0.5, and that will give us some random results. So that's it for our material, guys. You can close that off now, just by pulling it over on top. So with our object here, I'm gonna tab into edit mode, and go Control R and put in about a half a dozen cuts down the length of our um, object here. And with those extra cuts, now I'm going to enable proportional editing by going up here and enabling it on connected right there. So now I can just grab that top edge. I have edge select mode right there. And if I change the fall off to be sharp, I can kind of grab it and pull it back and kind of give it a nice bending look. So there we have a nice sort of bent blade of grass. If I hit F3 and type in smooth, we can do shade smooth and kind of make that even nicer looking. So that's looking pretty good. Now for some more variety, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tab into edit mode and I'm going to shift D to duplicate that blade of grass. And if I split my window real quick here, I'm gonna change this over to the UV image editor. Now with the UV image editor here, if I grab our foliage color here, you can see that we have the vertices over that blade of grass. But what if I wanted one of these blades of grass? With this one, I could just grab the vertices with this blade selected here 
and move this to be over one of these other blades of grass, say this one for example. We can scale it down just a little bit. And now you can see we have two different blades of grass. And this gives us some nice variation. And I can take this and just hit R and Z to rotate around the Z. And we'll kind of make a nice little bush of grass here. So doing this and just duplicating some of these, rotating them along the Z axis and putting them nice and close together, we're gonna make a little patch of grass. And then also using proportional editing to kind of grab these faces, rotate them around to give them some more variation and curve. Let's add one more variation to our grass by duplicating our larger blade here, rotating a little bit, giving it a little bit of a different look, and then selecting that one, grabbing our vertices over here by hitting A, and we'll grab a different blade of grass for this one. Maybe this one right here will work nice, or we can go with this one over here. And you can see we have some nice variation happening in our grass. Now I recommend getting a patch of about uh, 12 blades of grass or so. So I'm just gonna duplicate all of these one more time by hitting Shift D and rotating it along the Z here, pulling it over a little bit and scaling it down a little bit. So we have some nice variation in our little patch of grass here. I think that's looking pretty good. And if I just make sure it's all centered over that origin point right there, we're ready to add it as a particle system. But for this, all I have to do now is we'll close off that window I'm just gonna quick hit Shift A and add in a plane to add some grass to. I'm gonna to switch to Sculpt Mode and then I'm gonna enable Dynamic Topology up here real quick. So I can just do a quick bit of sculpting on this mesh to kind of give ourselves, if I switch here, it's a little easier to see, to kind of give ourselves some variation to work with. So I'm just gonna run around here, adding some bumps and then I can hold Control to kind of take away some of the mesh as well. That's looking perfectly fine. And then with dynamic topology, we'll also want to choose shade smooth. And there we have it, a plane that we can use to add some grass to. So that's all I really need. I'm going to jump back to object mode. And with our plane selected now, I'm just going to drop down to the particle tab here and hit new particles. Let me make this a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing here. And here I'm going to change it to hair. I'll make it advanced. And then I'm going to scroll down and under render, we're going to change it from render as path to render as object. And then for that object under instance object, we're gonna choose our foliage plane there that we added. And there you have it, we have our grass all over our plane. It's looking very nice. Let me hide our main piece of grass there so it's not showing up just by hitting H. And then I can go ahead and change the scale a bit, the random scale a little bit. And the last thing to really give us some nice looking randomizing results is we're gonna go to weight paint. I'm gonna hit F to make my brush a little bit bigger. And we're just going to paint around here, leaving some areas blue and then other areas completely red. This is gonna kind of choose where the grass is laid on our plan. So also you can switch from draw over to subtract and take away if you added a little bit too much maybe. But something like that looks like it'll be pretty good. And all I have to do now is jump back into object mode. And then towards the bottom of our particle settings here, you can see we have vertex group we're gonna choose that, and for the density, we're gonna choose that group we just made. So go ahead and do that, and you can see we now have some sort of bunched up grass, and it looks more realistic with how grass grows. And then you can also choose the length to be that group as well, and this will give you some smaller grass towards the edge of those bushes of grass, and it just makes it look a lot better. So with our vertex group set up now, there's just a few extra settings to really kind of push this a little bit further. That's gonna be under physics. You can change the Brownian motion a little bit, and this will give it some nice random motion. And then under rotation, if you check that there, you can move the phase, and this will change the rotation of them, and then randomize that phase, and this will give it some like I said, randomizing rotation. So there you go, with some nice randomized rotation, it's looking much better. And then the last thing I like to do under velocity is grass usually kind of hangs to one side because of wind and such. So I'm gonna take the object aligned X value here and just pull it a little bit to one direction. And so you can see we have all the grass kind of sagging along the X axis there a little bit. And that just looks a bit more realistic for grass. You don't wanna to go too much on this, but a little bit can definitely help. And with that set up, all we have to do is give ourselves a bunch more grass. I'm gonna change that to 5,000. And if we switch to rendered view here, give it a second to load up, you can see we have our grass all over the scene and it's looking quite nice. If I jump over to our render settings here, enabling ambient occlusion will improve our results a little bit, as well as enabling 
subsurface scattering, and screen space reflections. Go ahead and enable all of these. Now just so you can see the grass a little bit better as how it would look in a finished scene, I'm gonna give our floor material here, our ground, just a dark brown color. So I just hit new material there, drop it into the grays there and take it way down to the brown value. So there we have it, some nice looking grass. Let's just grab our sun lamp here. And if you rotate it to be more at a sharp angle, so I'm just rotating the sun to be kind of at a sharp late afternoon angle here coming across our grass like you see here. And then I'm gonna give it a little bit of a warmer color here, a little bit of an orange. And then as you zoom in here, what we can do is change the shadow. We want the end to extend a little bit further. So I'm gonna change the clip end to be 100. As you can see, that gives us some of the shadows that I was talking about. You might have to reposition your sun a little bit now. And then contact shadows as well. We'll give you some nice looking results. I think I might've made this material a little bit too dark there. So to get rid of the blocky shadows, I just turn this back down to 80. And now I'm gonna open an environment map just to make this look a little prettier. So I'm gonna go to our world settings there under color. I'll check that box and choose environment texture. Now I'm just gonna open up an HDR from HDR Haven. This is called Clouds Layer. I downloaded it in 4K. I'll link to it in the description below. But as you can see, opening that up gives us a much nicer looking finished result here. And if I just zoom in here a little bit on our grass, you can see that we have some very nice looking results. The last thing I like to do to give our grass some better results is give it some shadows. So I like to add in an object here. You can use whatever you want, just a cube scaled down and scaled up along the Z to add a long shadow is really all you need. And if you want to use something like a tree to give yourself even more sort of um, randomized looking shadows, you would get even better looking results. But that's gonna do it guys for this tutorial. If I just go over here and crank the number up even more three times there to give ourselves a whole bunch of grass, you can see if I unselect everything by double tapping A, that we have a really nice looking grass field here that could be rendered and uh, you can get some great looking results. Also, we can boost the contrast a little bit here if I go into the color management and give the base contrast just a high contrast. We have some nicer looking results there. Maybe crank the exposure up a little bit as well. Go 1.4 for now. And there you have it, some great looking grass right out of Blender 2.8 EVs render engine. Now I highly recommend adding more variations of grass to this and different types of grass. Some seedy grass, some weeds, all these things will give you even more realistic looking results in your grass once they're added. You can get plenty of textures for something like this from textures.com or like I said, the website that I got this texture from, CCO Textures, links in the description. And also if you wanna support the channel, you can always pick up the realistic nature asset pack and tree asset pack available for just 10 bucks on the Blender market. And like I said at the beginning of the video, they are updated to work with Blender 2.8 EV now as well. But that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I hope you had some fun creating some realistic looking grass. I really love seeing your results. So if you create something cool, post it in the comments below. If you liked the video, leave a thumbs up. If you disliked it, leave a thumbs down. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.